In this video, I'll mount and test out the Blue Diamond brush cutter. It's the first time that I've hooked it up, so there are several details that I'll need to pay attention to. So I'll show you step by step exactly what I'm doing. Then we'll take it for a spin and see how well it performs. This is the 42 inch heavy duty brush cutter made by Blue Diamond and they're out of Knoxville, Tennessee. Give you a quick look here. So it looks like it's well built. Um, nice thick metal. I've had this kind of partially covered. The barn that I have here on the property is uh, partially falling down, so it hasn't been as well protected from the elements as I would like, but I have to wait for a proper building to go up, and you know how things are these days with construction. So hopefully that will happen sometime in the next six months, but for now, we just kind of make do with what we've got. So this brush cutter and in general the mowers that attach to mini excavators are powered using the excavators auxiliary hydraulic system. So these hydraulic lines take hydraulic fluid from the excavator and the pressure of that fluid is what turns the blade underneath. And once we get it hooked up to the excavator I'll show you what the blades look like. So this brush cutter has a maximum flow rate of 24 gallons per minute, and the minimum required flow rate is 13 gallons a minute. So when we hook it up to the excavator here, uh, on my Bobcat E55, I have a, the primary auxiliary hydraulic system that is currently hooked up to the thumb. And then I have a secondary hydraulic system. Unfortunately, the secondary hydraulic system only provides 12 gallons a minute, and I need a minimum of 13. The primary auxiliary can do 20 gallons per minute. So 20 should be perfect for the brush cutter and if we go underneath here, you can, hopefully you can see here how much wider diameter this auxiliary hydraulic line is compared to this one. So the secondary system here isn't gonna do it. So my plan is to disconnect the thumb and I'll just run the hoses underneath here and connect the thumb into the secondary auxiliary line. It should be fine for the thumb. The thumb will move a lot more slowly, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. But first, before we attach the brush cutter, we are at the beginning of November and it's starting to get chilly out. Uh, right now it's probably oh, mid 40s and tonight's the first night that we're supposed to get temperatures below freezing. So it's time to add some diesel treatment so that our fuel doesn't gel up on us. Uh, tonight it's supposed to be oh, I think 29 and then the next several nights it's going to be below freezing and it is still early November, so we've got a lot more, even colder temperatures to look forward to. So what I have is this Hot Shots Secret diesel anti-gel solution. And I've calculated that based on the capacity of the fuel tank, which is 21 gallons for the Bobcat, I'm gonna need 80 milliliters of this solution to add to the tank. So I wanna go ahead and do that now, so that when we run the excavator here in a few minutes to attach the mower. That'll give us a chance to get this solution well distributed throughout the fuel lines. It's a little more than 80, but it's close enough. It 
So our 80 milliliters is calculated based on a full tank. So we'll top it up here. Adding this extra diesel should also help mix that anti-gel solution in. And then we'll just let the excavator run here. Get the treated diesel run through the entire fuel system. Yeah, I can tell we're getting close. I can hear it filling up. Yep, now I see it just a little bit more. All right, that doesn't do it. Perfect. Let's check the other side. And the other side is good. All right. We are ready to go. Let me just do a little test here, make sure that these are gonna be long enough. Yep, that should be good. Doesn't give us a lot of wiggle room, but we'll do a very careful test to make sure we've got sufficient range of motion after we get these things plugged in. So I mentioned the first thing we're gonna do is move the hydraulic lines for the thumb over to the secondary auxiliary on the other side so that we can have the full 20 gallon per minute flow from the primary auxiliary. So I'll take you into the cab and show you how we're gonna 
uh, relieve the pressure on both auxiliaries to make it easier to work with these quick connects. Okay, so here on the, the right hand side, this is the primary auxiliary. You can see that it operates the thumb just by running this little switch back and forth. So we want the thumb to be all the way retracted, so it's out of the way. So we're in a good position there. The secondary auxiliary, which I don't have anything attached to right now, uh, it is controlled by this toggle switch, which is the same as what moves the boom relative to the cab down at the pivot point right there in front. Uh, I'm up against the ground. I've got everything situated the way I want it, so I'm not actually gonna demonstrate that, but in order to run the secondary auxiliary, there's a little switch down here that we move. And so now that switches the control. So now this will do the secondary auxiliary. So to relieve the pressure in those lines to make it easier for us to work the quick connect, we actually turn the engine off. And we need to have the, the safety switch, the safety lever in the down position. Uh, this up position, when it's up like this, that gives me access to exit the cab, and it also deactivates all of the hydraulics. So we need the hydraulics to be active in order to release the pressure. And I just turn this to auxiliary. And then I work these toggles back and forth. And I'm gonna turn the blower off here, so hopefully you can hear the little click when I move it. So I just move this back and forth a couple of times, and that should relieve the pressure on the primary auxiliary. And I've got the switch in the right position, so now I can run this one back and forth a couple of times to relieve the pressure on the secondary auxiliary. All right, so to remove these, we just push the coupling up and then pull it out. And these things are surprisingly clean. It's really a cool system. So now for the second one, and just as easy as that. Okay, so you can see here where these hoses are fed through these little keepers, and then we've got a curve here. So I'm gonna unthread these, see if I can get this hooked or rotated underneath to go into the keepers on the other side, and then we'll get them plugged in. Actually, do this one first. All right, there's one. And there's the other. I'll show you the other side. Okay, so here's our cylinder for the thumb with our hoses. Let's see. I think that might be too tight to wrap that around. So I think on this one, I'm gonna skip that keeper and just go straight through. We'll see, I might need to make some adjustments depending on how this cylinder moves relative to this hose. Um, yeah, we'll just go for it. But we'll have to be careful. And what I might end up doing is rotating this cylinder so that the fittings are on this side of the arm, actually pointing towards, but 
we'll see, this should get us going for now. All right, that gives us enough room. So we've got our hoses fed through here. Just grab one and make sure that it's clean here. And push it on. And we're good. Bring it up really close for the next one. That one hit the dirt. Let's give it a quick wipe. Yep, that looks good. Easy peasy. All right, now we'll plug in the brush cutter and I am not going to run these through the keepers because I think we're gonna need the extra slack when we tilt the deck there. So we'll just uh, plug these in, let them hang free, see how it goes, and then we can always change them later if need be. So, yeah. Uh, this one first. Yeah, this one, if that's nice and clean. All right. Well, it's a little bit tight. I'm just gonna, gonna have to be very careful to make sure that I don't stretch this. So why don't we go ahead and give it a quick test here. going to carefully put it through the motions to see uh, well that looks good no problem there Look. Well, it's still still okay. Pivot. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, that's tight. All right. Well, I think it's good enough to get started with, but I think I will invest in a couple of maybe two foot extensions just so we don't have that sharp bend up at the top. Okay, so we're back in the cab and I just wanna run the thumb here real quick. Let's uh, get this switched back over. And... Actually, that's plenty fast. times just to make sure that the lines are fully charged. Yeah, but I don't think there's any reason why I can't have the thumb attached to the secondary auxiliary hydraulic lines more or less permanently. So this is what the underside of the mower looks like. There's this big beefy triangular plate with these blades that spin. And so I'm gonna go ahead and get this thing fired up, get it spinning so that we can charge the hydraulic lines with hydraulic fluid and also the hydraulic motor. And then we'll go check the reservoir 
in the excavator to make sure that we still have enough hydraulic fluid in the system for everything to run properly. All right, so the three right there means that we're on the highest flow setting for the primary auxiliary hydraulic system. And I will just go ahead and operate this little thumb toggle and we'll fire her up. Can't see anything from this angle, but it sure sounds satisfying. Okay, so we've run the auxiliary hydraulic system to make sure that it's fully charged all the way through the brush cutter, including spinning the brush cutter's motor. We've also operated the thumb that is connected to the secondary auxiliary hydraulic system, so it should be fully charged. So now we're going to take a look at the hydraulic fluid reservoir in the excavator and make sure that it hasn't dropped down too much. This is the hydraulic fluid reservoir, and I can tell from the sight glass here that our level is just fine. So we can go ahead and get it closed up and then test out the cutter. And if you're new to the channel, I do homesteading type videos and also videos about wine and winemaking. I'm in the early stages of developing this beautiful 70 acre property here in the Blue Ridge Mountains of North Carolina into what I'm calling a homestead winery. So we've got a long journey ahead of us, but that means plenty of interesting content for the future. So welcome to the channel. I'm glad you're along for the ride. So one more thing I want to try here real quick before we wrap up the video is coming in from above. It's definitely designed to cut from the side. The openings on the housing for the cutter are on the side and they're just those short little blades that are attached to that triangle of, of steel. So it doesn't, it's not like a forestry cutter where it can grind from the top down, but I still want to do a quick test and, and just see what happens when I come in from above.
Well, that actually worked much better than I anticipated. I didn't think that I'd chew up as much stuff coming from the top down. There's definitely some cleanup that could be done side to side, but it worked surprisingly well. So I'm looking forward to putting this to some serious use. Before I go too far though, I want to get a couple of extensions so I don't have to worry about pulling on the hydraulic lines. But it seems like a well-built machine and it's very comfortable. I can feel the weight, but it's not, it doesn't make the excavator too tippy. And with the hills and slopes that I've got here at the property, I think this brush cutter plus the excavator are going to be exactly what I need to get some serious clearing done. Well, I think that'll about do it for this video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up and do consider subscribing to the channel. I've got lots of interesting content planned for the future and I'd love for you to join me. In the meantime, take care of yourself. I look forward to seeing you on the next video. Cheers.